Anyone fascinated by the natural world has probably wondered why some animals have such strange looking sense organs. The elephant with its huge ears. The antennae of a butterfly, which up close look like feathers. The snake with its split tongue. And what about less obvious enhancements, like the sensory cells on a crocodile's skin? Surely these evolutionary traits aren't just for decoration. In fact, the size, shape, and location of these animal sense organs is all for a purpose. And just like us, animals rely on their senses to communicate with each other, find their way around, stay safe, and most importantly, to find food. When you see how superior some animal senses are compared to those of humans, you might wonder how we ever managed to stay on top of the food chain. Animal super senses. You won't believe what's possible. On this episode of Animal Super Senses, we get in touch with the feelings of wild animals. Really in touch, because animals, just like humans, rely heavily on their sense of touch every day in every way. There may be a fine line between pleasure and pain, but not knowing the difference between the two can be absolutely fatal. The sense of touch does more than tell us about that ant biting into our skin, or helps a grizzly bear to keep hold of a slippery salmon when he is hungry. Touch alerts animals to pressure, heat, cold, wind, and yes, pain. Helping them to catch food, manipulate objects in their paws, but also to navigate and communicate. Touch receptors, which include body hair, inform the brain about tactile sensations. These receptors fall into two main categories, mechanoreceptors, which detect movement, and thermoreceptors, which respond to temperature. On the vast plains of the African savanna, there is an animal not famed for its sensitivity, when perhaps it should be. After all, we are talking about the largest living land mammal, one that eats a minimum of 200 pounds per day and whose skin is their own body armor. But don't be fooled by their size their seemingly thick skin or prodigious appetites. African elephants and their Indian relatives are remarkably sensitive creatures. For one thing, they are highly intelligent animals which display complex social behaviors such as courtship, communal care, vocal communication and play. but they are also sensitive in the most literal and most scientific use of the word. To begin with, that thick skin up to one and a half inches thick is in fact highly tuned to the slightest touch. And no part of the elephant's body is more tactile than its trunk. Used primarily to locate and manipulate food, elephants are herbivores and an elephant's trunk is in constant use.
They are remarkable for their strength as well as sensitivity, able to pick up objects in excess of 500 pounds in weight. But their trunks are also so responsive to touch that they are capable of perceiving pressure differences as low as 0.01 inch in depth. The small sensory hairs on the tip of the trunk are in part responsible for the sensitivity. Called Piscinian corpuscles, these cells pick up on the tiniest vibrations. It's interesting to note that Piscinian corpuscles show up elsewhere in nature, on human fingertips, for example. On the elephant's trunk, they are constantly in use, as the trunk plays a part not just in foraging for food, but in that rich social life. The trunk can be used to caress, nudge, or nudge other members of the herd, not least during mating season. Well, as the old saying goes, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Mutual grooming is an important and practical way for social animals not only to look after one another, but also to form bonds. There can be few bonds in the wild stronger than a mother kangaroo and her baby Joey. While still the tiniest infant, it climbs from its mother's abdomen to her pouch and stays there for over six months. Kangaroos then are used to intimacy from the get-go. Fun fact, a group of kangaroos is called a mob. To be accepted into the mob, an outsider will be subject to a sniffing, but also a rubbing of noses. Mutual grooming and touching may then proceed uninhibited. But rub a kangaroo the wrong way and it could come to blows. Ritualized fighting, or as it looks to us, boxing, is a part of this marsupial's tactile toolkit. It's that moment when a kanga's sense of touch becomes a sense of Tens of thousands of miles away from the Australian outback, on the Serengeti National Park, another very distinctive mammal uses touch to strengthen bonds between family and herd. Zebras live in herds as many as 1,000 strong, but their first loyalty is always to the family group, which will generally number between five and 20 animals. They will maintain these bonds over many years. The bonds are strong. For example, 
if an individual gets lost or has to slow down due to age or injury, the rest of the zebras will go on the lookout for their lost companion or adjust their traveling pace in response. Something that strengthens those bonds are mutual groomings, where zebras line up alongside each other, neck and neck and cheek to cheek as it were, and nibble the hair on each other's neck and back. That actually looks like fun. The sensory hairs on the skins of mammals plays a big part in their sense of touch. But if we shrink things down, the very same thing applies to arachnids, spiders for example. This small but serious looking customer is a trapdoor spider. It's able to detect vibrations and movement through the tiny sensory hairs on its body. Trapdoor spiders, just as their name suggests, are ambush predators, meaning they lie in wait. Just biding their time until their spidey sense feels a vibration, and then they pounce. And then it is all over. The orb weaver spider goes about snaring their prey in a slightly different manner, but they too rely on their sense of touch to get it right. With their notably poor eyesight, they must. The webs they so cleverly weave are not there only to ensnare their prey, although they do that very effectively too. The orb weaver spider's web also extends their range of feeling or sense of touch. But perhaps the strangest application of the super spidey sense of touch, sorry, how could we resist, isn't about luring and trapping prey so much as about practicing safe sex. As in the case with many arachnids, the funnel web spider male spider is considerably smaller than its female counterpart. When the male wants to mate with the female, he encounters a minefield of potentially hazardous obstacles to success. For one thing, the female, if caught by surprise, will often simply eat her hapless suitor. And so much for romance. If, however, the male approaches her less aggressively and in effect, strokes her shell with his legs, giving her what we might think of in anthropomorphic terms as a back massage, then the female is less likely to kill and eat him on approach. And in fact, the male may be lucky and survive several bouts of spider intercourse before she finally decides not only she threw with him, but she's hungry.
The sting is in the tail when it comes to scorpions. If you ever feel their touch, it may be the last thing you feel. The desert crawlers we see here are known as large, hairy desert scorpions. These scorpions still come with the same elongated body, the same segmented tail, and yes, the same venomous stinger at the end of that tail. They have, count them, four pairs of legs and a pair of appendages called pedipalps, which look a lot like claws. These work like pincers, excellent for grasping hold of prey and for defense. Not only are they standard equipment for insect aliens in every science fiction movie you've ever seen, they're also highly intricate pieces of equipment. Fine sensory hairs pick up on windborne vibrations. Tiny organs on the tips of their legs can detect vibrations in the ground. And on its soft underbelly, the scorpion rounds out their armory of touch sensors with these comb-like sense organs known as pectines. The teeth of this comb detect and evaluate the texture and vibrations of different surfaces. Hair sensors come in all sizes, from the microscopic to the outsized. Whiskers, such as the ones you see on this cheetah out on the prowl of the East African grasslands, are an example of hair sensors you can definitely see for yourself. Whiskers, more correctly known as vibrissa, supply their owners with vital sensory information about their environment. The follicle of each and every whisker is connected to thousands of nerve receptors, meaning the animal can feel its way through its surroundings by picking up on tiny vibrations in the air or water. No doubt this comes in handy for the cheetah, but this cat does its hunting during the day. Where whiskers really come into their own as an alternative sensing device is when day turns to night and nocturnal predators must move with stealth and accuracy. There's no better example of a feline with wicked whiskers than the leopard, perhaps the most elegant night prowler of them all. A leopard will typically have as many as 30 whiskers on either side of its face, meaning some 30,000 nerve receptors. They're acutely sensitive, enough to sense vibrations in the changing air currents. And in comparison with their size, the leopard's whiskers are the widest of all the felines, wider, in fact, than their bodies. Sad to say, in Asia, leopard whiskers are prized for the wrong reasons. Used in dubious medicines, they are another reason that poachers hunt this magnificent creature.
Half a world and oceans away from such trouble, the Australian sea lion is renowned for its whiskery good looks. In fact, there's even a university-sponsored website dedicated to studying the habits of Western Australian sea lions, called Whisker Patrol. But their facial hair isn't for decoration, nor does it have as much a part to play when the Aussie sea lion wanders onto dry land. No, their whiskers really come into their own when the Australian sea lion goes underwater, close to the sea floor. To hunt for squid, fish, octopus, rock lobsters, and even small sharks, the Aussie sea lion will typically seek out this kind of prey by closing their eyes and feeling around using their whiskers. The sea lion's whiskers are in fact a highly sensitive hydrodynamic receptor system. In slightly simpler terms, that means they can detect the tiny vibrations that are created when fish and other tasty morsels move through the water. One of the creatures the sea lion hunts for is, as mentioned, the octopus. But octopi are outfitted with their own super sense of touch, helping them to elude capture and to track down prey of their own. As it has been captured in popular imagination over the past few years, the octopus is a highly intelligent animal. It is the only invertebrate that is thought to use tools for example, gathering shells and using them as body armor. Octopuses have even been known to break out of their aquariums and get into others in the hunt for a good meal. There are even cases where octopi have clambered aboard fishing boats and opened up the hold to get at the crabs within. But how do they do all that? Well, their unusually high intelligence doesn't hinder them, but they go a long way by utilizing their super sense of touch. The blue-ringed octopus, depicted here, is commonly found in tide pools and coral reefs of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. As with all of their kind, they have two eyes and four pairs of arms. Now, on each arm, there are two rows of off-white colored suckers that can be moved independently. There are thousands of these little suckers on an octopus's body, and every one of those suckers may contain up to 10,000 neurons that detect the slightest touch, as well as taste. What you most certainly don't want to do is to come into close contact with a blue-ringed octopus. The venom it unleashes when it seizes its prey is said to be over 1,000 times more lethal than cyanide. On animal super senses, we touch it and feel it, see it and hear it, taste it and smell it like animals do. The senses are the star on this show, and this episode has been no exception. The sense of touch has put us in contact with all kinds of heightened sensations. But these incredible powers of perception will fight again another day. So join us next time on Animal Super Senses.